Hello everyone, we are excited to announce that we have started a new series on podcast interviews with cybersecurity experts or experts from the other disruptive technologies field. The podcast interviews will help us to get latest on the technology's development, to get insights on cybersecurity industry trends, to gain knowledge, and to learn something new. Welcome to the first podcast interview from the series of podcast interviews on disruptive and trending technologies. In this podcast, we will discuss on cyber warfare and cyber war with the cybersecurity expert. Like and subscribe to this channel if you want to receive other insightful podcast interviews like this and other educational videos on the disruptive technologies. To begin with, for me and for our listeners, a short answer to what is a cyber war. I mean, how to define cyber war. All right. Thanks for inviting me to the podcast, Edri. I really appreciate that. Um, so cyber war is defined to be the use of a violent attack aimed at causing death or harm to people and objects in a certain state or nation. Um, cyber war entails an attack which involves the use of military war equipment, uh, which is sometimes controlled by high technological computer and network systems to cause death, damage, or pain to a certain nation or state. Okay, <laughs> I understood it to some extent. But if someone wants to understand about cyber war in detail, what are they supposed to know? See, cyber war can be described in multiple ways. But the basic definition and understanding remains the same. Cyber war could be further described as a form of fight between two conflicting nations, two states, or even a majority of them, and at most times it occurs as a result of one nation trying to boost over its military power and expertise towards its opponent or competing nation in terms of military superiority. Cyber war could also sometimes occur as a form of revenge from one state, revenging to its opponent's state simply because one of the nations could have had initially caused an attack to the nation and evicted massive loss of lives and property as well. Uh, cyber war could also result as a form of boast, intimidation, superiority, state power rank, rank of nation in terms of its military capabilities of one nation towards another nation. There have been incidences of nations trying to fight hard to eliminate some of these terroristic groups within their state fraternity. Cyber war could also be two nations or states or it can also be a nation that paid or hired an individual organization uh, to infiltrate cyber war against their opponent's state. That was insightful. Thanks for that. Okay, so I have read about cyber warfare as well in blogs and magazines. What is cyber warfare? I mean, a short answer to what is a cyber warfare for our listeners will be great. I mean, how to define cyber warfare? Yes, that is a good question. The terms cyber war and cyber warfare are related yet different. Cyber warfare is defined to be the procedural techniques and activities involved in cyber war. The only difference between a cyber war and a cyber warfare is that cyber warfare entails procedural technicalities and use of technology to cause a warfare activity within a given state's software computer systems or to cause a state of discomfort to a particular nation, whereas cyber war involves the violence and destruction, the real pain evicted, loss, or even 
death imposed. Massive loss of lives and great damage to property are the key defining elements of cyber war. It is generally aimed at inflicting pain and suffering to a particular state or nation. Other scholars go ahead and argue that cyber war is simply cyber terrorism. According to them, it is a terroristic act. Okay, again, I understood it to some extent. But if someone wants to understand about cyber warfare in detail, what are they supposed to know? And how different scholars have defined cyber warfare as? Cyber warfare can also be defined to be the use of digital computer system attacks to attack a nation causing state of disorder and disrupting computer systems of other countries. Furthermore, we can define cyber warfare further in a simple language to be a war from a country whose military base is not so strong, but its technological system is so much more developed and advanced such that its application to the state, which has a strong military war weapon, like for example the state, will result in great stress and discomfort to the nation. Different scholars have defined cyber warfare in different ways, but as I said, the basic definition and understanding remain the same. Paolo Shikarin and his colleagues define cyber warfare as an extension of policy by actions taken in cyberspace by state actors or non-state actors with a significant state direction or support that constitute a serious threat to another state's security or an action of the same nature in response to a serious threat to a state's security, actual or perceived. Tadeo defines cyber warfare as the warfare grounded on a certain use of ICTs within an offensive or defensive military strategy endorsed by a state and aiming at the immediate disruption or control or the enemy's resources and which is waged within the informational environment with agents and targets ranging both on the physical and non-physical domains and whose level of violence may vary circumstances. Richard A. Clark, former U.S. National Coordinator, defines cyber warfare as actions by a nation-state to penetrate other nations' computers or networks for the purpose of causing damage or disruption. Some of the world's superpower states have launched and employed personnel and computer experts to work in their system control management systems to have offensive and defensive mechanisms to react and rise to defend the entire state when cases of cyber warfare arise. A good example of such states is the U.S. and the Chinese government. Okay, can you share one incident of cyber war from the past? Yes, of course. There are many incidents. As I mentioned, cyber war can be defined as a terroristic crime evicted by a particular individual or a certain criminal group. For example, the Al-Shab in Kenya and Boko Haram in Nigeria towards its own parental nation or towards another particular nation is the war itself now the fight. On the other hand, cyber warfare entails the use of highly technological weapons to attract a given state or nation, the strategies, approaches, and technicalities involved in the fight. Okay, as I understood, Cyber warfare is defined to be the procedural techniques and activities involved in cyber war. What all are different procedural techniques and activities involved in cyber war? Oh, there are multiple procedural techniques and activities involved in cyber war. Like, for example, uh, sabotage. This is a kind of warfare that involves the use of technological machine control devices to evict a threat or a war to a certain nation. The technological military equipment can be sent through the space to another country's cloud space. So there are also different forms of attack under the category. We may have some sea attack whereby a technological military weapon can be sent through the water to attack the water services of the other country or can be strategized at a certain point in the water. Then now the targeted opponent upon arriving the place they then got attacked. 
The military war weapon can also be sent through an air base. This is the most recently used strategy whereby the states incorporate use of modern weapons like, for example, drones and other air-controlled weapons. In July, back in the year 2010, there was a case of malicious software program known as Stuxnet that has infiltrated factory companies. Also, in June 2019, the United States launched a cyber attack against Iranian weapon systems to the shooting down of the U.S. drone being in Strait of Hormuz. Second would be denial of access. A denial of access attack is also another common form of cyber warfare. These forms of attack involve denial of some major machine or network to a given organization, state, or nation. This is intentionally done to commit a certain criminal malicious activity without the owner not knowing of the activity. The attackers of this kind of warfare target the sites that are vital to a functionality of a very major necessity. They disconnect vital network communication of different authorities' networks. They may not necessarily be concerned with a network system. They may also interfere with infrastructure cutting along a communication and travel channels in different fields. For example, they may block major roads heading to very vital destinations. They may also, in some cases, go ahead and cut communication cables deep underneath the sea, cutting along communication that's relevant in the sea. The third would be the electrical power grid. The other common type of warfare attack is also known as the electrical power grid. In this form of cyber warfare, attackers interfere with administrative system control units. So these hackers will visit the administration unit of a given institution and they will try to interfere with the electrical control systems. They may implant their own system control gadgets and they take away system control gadgets of a given institution. The hacker may get the computer system control kits, but those that are majorly controlled by electrical means. There are some self-support agencies that offer system security control mechanisms like, for example, the United States Department of Homeland Security. There are some relevant cases whereby there had been an attempted electrical cyber warfare attack whereby China and Russia had infiltrated the electrical grid control of the United States of America, whereby the two states tried to install software programs that could be used to control the system functionality of the U.S. fraternity. The Chinese denied the allegations and upon further investigation it came out that the hackers wanted to disconnect the power grid and run the entire system at the net at a droop speed. There is also another reported case in the state of Turkey whereby the Iranian hackers launched a massive power outage for 12 hours in 44 provinces in Turkey, impacting a total of 40 people. Also, back in the year 2019, the U.S. tried to cyber attack the electrical grid belonging to the U.S. fraternity. According to the reports, the U.S. planted a malware potentially capable of disrupting the electrical system in the state of Russia. The Propaganda The propaganda is also another form of cyber warfare method. This method simply involves the use of propaganda to preach false, full information about a certain aspect in each state or country. It is a method which involves capturing the attention of the public by creating public awareness. It might involve use of social media platforms or use of public address systems to capture a large group of individuals. This is a very weak method, but at some point it might turn out to be one of the most dangerous and cruel tactics of cyberware. Simply a terroristic organization might take advantage of this claim, the falseful allegations, to attack a certain state or nation. 
For instance, Zhao and Donald 260 argue that propaganda is the deliberate systematic attempt to shape perceptions, manipulate cognitions, and direct behavior to achieve a response that further the desired internet of the propagandist. The Economic Disruption Economic disruption is also another form of cyber warfare. This form of cybercrime is the most destroying cyber warfare simply because they focus on the economical aspect of a country. This form of cyber warfare generally targets the economical and institutional or organizational unit of a state. For example, in the year 2017, the WannaCry and Petria cyber warfare caused a great disruption in the Ukraine National Health Service pharmaceutical giant Merrick Marsk Shipping Company and other organizations around the world. There are also other forms of cyber warfare attacks like the surprise cyber attack and the espionage attacks. The espionage type of cyber warfare attack may not be necessarily described as a traditional form of attack or it might not also be described as an act of war but in some instances, it may fall in the two categories in some of the instances which can be grouped as an espionage form of cyber warfare attack may include, for example, the following instance, the massive spying by the U.S. on many countries as revealed by Edward Snowden. Wow. That was mind-opening. If I want to trace back or when I think about cyber war and cyber warfare, and if I want to understand how old or new the terms cyber war or cyber warfare are, have they been recently coined or they are here for long? <laughs> so... The history of cyber war can be traced back to begin in 1987 with the United States and the other English-speaking nations with the U.S. being the most targeted or else the nation that has interest in technological security covers. Since the first case of cyber warfare emerged, cyber warfare cases have been evolving disruptively and destructively greatly among the Iran nation North Korea with Russia the state that has reported most cases concerning cyber warfare activities. The emergence of cyber war as described in Thomas Ridd's History of All Things History states that the cyber war rose in the year 1987 and that describes that future will be fought with giant flying robots, powerful flying vehicles, and powerful weapons. The robotic type cyber warfare rose in the year 1990 and also it engaged more with computerized and networks forms. Hackers started using the internet and computer form systems to hack for information across the internet. The cyber warfare hackers started to figure out how to configure new technological computerized inventions to oppose for attacks. In the year 2001, the U.S. president made a saying that their system had now been well configured such that everything in their system was being run by computers from power control mechanisms, traffic mechanisms up to even air transport were being controlled by the computer systems and that someone can sit at their homes and simply get to watch the progress of another nation from the comfort of their own home. Since then, computer and technological-based cyber warfare scenarios have been continued to be explained in different sources with a 2007 Web War I arrival, which hit greatly and destructively the state of Estonia. The cyber warfare crime was a denial of service-based type of cyber warfare and hit almost 70% of websites in the state of Estonia, taking down the online banking, digitizing new and government sites of the country. The attack was prompted by the act of the Estonian government to move a Soviet-era statue out of a central location in the capital city of Tallinn, a situation which made Russian fraternity so bitter and angry. Another hybrid commotion of cyber warfare emerged in the year 2008 
and this involved a combination of both military and hacker forces, and this was a very deadly and challenging cyber warfare which came out because of technological growth. In the year 2010, a more advanced technological cyber warfare emerged. This time, it was a virus that destroyed physical objects hidden underground in the Earth's surface. The virus was really of great loss to the entire nation and state of Iran since it destroyed more of a thousand aluminum centrifuges, which resulted to a great chaos in the entire nation. The virus is believed to have spread through Iran's network and has issued commands to the centrifuges hidden underneath underground surfaces, making them operate at a higher abnormal speed causing them to break and torn apart. This was one amongst the first genuine cyber weapons and its main intention was to inflict physical damage. This kind of warfare greatly ruined a fifth of Iranian's nuclear centrifuges. In the year 2012, after the Iran centrifuges were destroyed, another malicious activity happened to the Saudi Arabian's petroleum storage tanks. The virus behind the activity was identified as Shamoon, and after the incident, it left on the screen an image of an American burning flag, which signified that the act was done by the Americans, though it is believed that the cyber warfare was done by the Iran's fraternity in revenge of their damaged centrifuges. In the year 2014, there was the Russian DDoS attack against the Ukraine. The Russians developed 32 times larger than the largest known cyber warfare and it greatly disrupted the Ukraine's internet. This attack by the Russian fraternity really brought a great loss and trauma to the state of Ukraine. In 2015 also, there was another attempted case of cyber warfare between the Russian state and also the German. The attempted malicious programmed activity was planned by the Russian state whereby the looking of information pertaining to the work of NATO and others. Another cyber crisis rose back in year 2015 between the Chinese and the Americans. The Chinese government managed to steal records of 21.5 million employees and other unsuccessful applicants from the United States Office of Personal Management. Cyber warfare also continued to rise into the world with better and improved systems of the malicious activities since in the year 2016, there was also another attempted cyber warfare activity and that this time it was also between the Russian and the Ukraine nation. The Russians hit a power supplier's network without being noticed for a period of six months and it was after which they cut the power supply system in the entire state of Ukraine causing blackouts that lasted for a period of six hours, which marked the first time ever in the world for power blackouts, resulting from cyber warfare activity. The Russians also continued to showcase its cyber warfare sovereignty by hitting Ukraine's pension fund, treasury, seaport authority, and the ministries of infrastructure. They also deleted Ukraine's data, which contained Ukraine's entire yearly budget. This incident took place back in late 2016, if I rightly recall. Can you share cyber warfare incidents from other countries? I've already given two or three examples before. Okay, I can share two incidents which are, are just on the top of my mind. Um, the first one is cyber warfare in China, and this is how it happened. So, countries and states have continued to improve and make their technological strengths become more improved and equipped to ensure that they prepare themselves well and competently to prevent and control the cases of cyber warfare in their nations. A country like, for example, China and India have not been locked out in the fight towards cyber warfare cases. Taking for example China, it has expanded its cyber capabilities and military technologies by acquiring military technologies from foreign nations. China is thought to have built more advanced digitized laboratories which are well equipped with digital technique attires to ensure that if it happens to be hit by cyber warfare activity, it will find it more improved and developed and it will be able to fight back. 
The state of China, as according to Fritz, China has embraced use of new space surveillance and also new intelligence gathering systems. It has also trained and improved its cyber warfare soldiers to enhance a good military cyber warfare coordination. China has also been accused of spying on other state cyber warfare technologies, although it was always stood up to withdraw itself from the said allegations. Back in the year 2018, at the scene of the Marriott Hotel chain, that led to a collection of personal details of around 500 million guests have turned out to be a Chinese part of intelligence gathering effort. Also, from the year 1995 to the year 2008, China had been involved in numerous cases of espionage through the centralized use of network students, business personnel, scientists, diplomats, and engineers from the Chinese government. Though a number of public and private institutions in the United States of America, India, Canada, Russia, France, and France defends for China, saying that China has not been involved in any cyber spying campaigns. China's state of uniqueness and self-owned cyber warfare techniques described with its new day-to-day -day technological improvements is making states think that they could be planning to initiate a Cold War military activity crime. The cyber attack Modern Warfare is going to feature in multiplayer mode, commonly referred to as the cyber attack, and it involves destroying opponent's side data in a more classical format. The technique is simply a search and destroy software in which two opponents are fighting to retrieve an EMP device and later use the EMP device to destroy the opponent's data center. The EMP device can be defused and when one of the opponents gets killed, the entire squad can rise in his defense. This kind of warfare proves to be quite technological and full of expertise and knowledge. Nations should stay alarmed when in their network's control system updates. The second one is cyber warfare in India, and this is how it happened. The rising incidences of cyber warfare attacks have also made the state and the entire nation of India not to be left behind in fighting for the control of cyber warfare malicious activities. This is because back in the year 2004, when technical-based cyber malicious activities started to rise and emerge strongly, the state of India formed the Indian Emergency Response Team to curb any of the cyber warfare activities prompting to threat the state of India. Despite the enforcement measure put aside to control the spread of the disease, cyber warfare cases also continue to rise and thrive at higher ratios and proportions which have also made India create a new subdivision of the Indian Emergency Response Team to curb attacks across the energy, transport, banking, telecom, defense, space, and other sensitive areas which India considered of great importance. The executive director of the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, the NPCIL, uh, stated back in February 2013 that his company alone had managed to control by blocking 10 targeted attacks at a day. The Information Technology Secretary, Satyana Rihanna, stated that the security control team was working tirelessly to finalize case policies related to national cyber security control that would focus majorly on domestic security solutions to ensure that it reduces its exposure to foreign technologies. Thanks a lot for the insightful interview. I hope our listeners and I learned a lot about cyber war and cyber warfare. Do drop us your comments if you want to have podcast interviews on any specific topic. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to receive other insightful podcast interviews like this and other educational videos on the disruptive technologies. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.